Hello. So today is going to be a bit more of a handheld video because we're in with the guinea pigs and I want to be able to show you them whilst I'm chatting to you. Now the guinea pigs are very scaredy so they may not like it that I'm talking in the enclosure but let's have a look and see what they're up to. Okay so this is the guinea pig enclosure that's just been cleaned out. You can see Firefly there. She's our biggest pig having a big old munch on the greens. They love parsley. And in the back, we've got Fiona and Pepper who are enjoying their dust bath there. That's how they clean themselves. Oh, a little squabble. And you can see Elvis is here behind the box. He's our oldest piggy. And then in here, we've got Malou, oh, let's see, Malou and Foxy who are not yet coming out. So, I'm going to sit in here with them. I'll show you some more about the guinea pigs soon, but what we're talking about today is, is the guinea pig's story and how they would fit into the hen haven. So, first of all, how did I start caring for guinea pigs, considering it's hen rescue? Well, a few years ago, we I was working in conjunction with Animal Liberation, and there was a project called the Research Animal Rehoming Service, which was set up which I was very excited about because obviously animals suffer horrendously in universities and in um, all kinds of animal testing, for medical testing and for cosmetics. Here, I'll show you them whilst I chat to you. Okay. Okay, we'll watch them whilst we chat. So Elvis, who's the lovely boy there, he's the only boy, um, the black and white boy, he was from our very first rescued guinea pigs. And he came with his three sisters and they had been used in some kind of testing in a university. Little Malou in the box there. And they were going to be killed, which is what happens oh, <laughs> after um, the either, even if they're used as kind of, a, a, even if they're not tested on, if they're not used for the experiment, then they will be killed at the end. But in this case, they got the chance to be rehomed. So, so to get them out of there, I started helping out and fostering. And at one point I fostered 13, he put a bit of parsley, 13 guinea pigs at once. And then it got to the group of four, who was Elvis, Pudding, Piper and Esther. And I was finding it hard to find a home for four of them together. So I ended up adopting them. And then we had, um, here's Malou in there. How are you doing? And Malou and Foxy, who's the fluffy at the back, the little one there, they were um, from a backyard breeding uh, thing where many of the guinea pigs actually died in the cold. And one of our foster carers had saved them and she was fostering. And I fostered these guys, those two for her while she went away for a couple of weeks, but my gosh, you know, they bonded in the end with Elvis and the other girls. And so I kept them. And then we've got Firefly, our biggest girl. And she's from a situation where someone was, um, had her with another guinea pig, but sadly her friend died um, in, a, in a very bad accident where a wind blew up an enclosure and the enclosure landed on her friend. So the person just needed some, um, some companions for Firefly and somewhere safe for her to go. So that's why she's here. Sorry, that's a bit blurry. Oh, it's gone a bit blurry. Let me just turn that around. Not sure why it was blurry, so we'll just I'll just chat to you for a second. So they're the guinea pigs that we've got, and your this is their inside area, and it's half of a room. So the, the um, rabbits have the other half of the room, which is where their food and litter trays are although they get to come in the whole house. And for most of their lives, these guys have gone outside in the day in different enclosures that we've had. Now, obviously, it's really important to make sure that the enclosures are totally predator-proof. Um, it can be an issue because they're so small, they could definitely be caught by cats. I'm just stretch my legs out. <laughs> um, I'll see if I can show you them again because they're more interesting than me. There we go. Hello. I don't know what's going on with the quails. They seem to be irritating each other today. Let's see what, don't, don't be scared. 
There we go. So we've got, um, there we go. <laughs> That's little Fiona quail, Foxy and Firefly. And the other thing, with, like, with the quails, who have both been found stray at different point, they can also be targeted as, pre um, as prey by rats. So you can imagine how hard it is to make an enclosure that's totally safe from, you want it completely safe from cats, from hawks, from, um, from rats, from snakes, from lizards. It really is challenging. And that's what we want to make, make happen for these guys. We want to have a large enclosure. They love eating grass, so with plenty of grass, plenty of dirt for the quails to dust bathe in <laughs> um, and of course much more space so that we could take in many more guinea pigs guinea pigs are an animal a bit like rabbits that they people really underestimate what they need as far as care and many people will i'll just i'll speak to you again for a sec <laughs> many people will keep them in a hutch in a very small hut same with quails actually and they will just neglect them um, or give them, or, you know, children will grab at them. You have to be careful handling guinea pigs. Personally, I don't handle them unless I have to. I like to clip their nails or something. I prefer sitting with them, so sitting with them in an enclosure and just letting them come to me if they want to. As for quails, there is an industry for both quail eggs and quail meat, which I find really disturbing. The other day I was in pet stock and I was buying some chicken feed, as I often do, and they had pigeon food, which was good, because um, our pigeon, Robin, has been eating a mixture of, ch of chicken food and Raphael's parrot food, so it was good to get him his own one, not that he likes it. Anyway, so I asked them if they could order me in some quail food, just to, because I want to get them a specific food for them. And the lady looked up on the system and said, oh, we have them alive or dead. And I was like, oh, no, no, I meant food for quails. And she's like, I know, but I'm just saying we have them frozen. I was like, how, why are you telling me that? And it just made me, she knows I'm a rescue, I'm a rescuer. And it just made me kind of really sad to think of this whole industry of quail killing. And it's done for animals and it's done for people. They're, they're thought of as a gourmet dish. Their flesh is thought of as gourmet. Um, here's pepper. Sorry about my camera, not focusing great. So it's unbelievable. They can be kept in like cages, very similar to the rabbit meat or the um, chickens, the battery chickens. Hey, sweetie. They're so funny when you watch them fly. They're like bumblebees. They fly right up into the air and then they have really no control over where they land. <laughs> So what we would be looking for, yes, we'd still have an indoor space for them in the um, in the winter or the very hot days, the very extreme days, but mostly we want to have an outside space for them, places to dust bath for the quails. They actually get on really well together. Often in their hay litter trays, they'll be nestling and sleeping in their quails and guinea pigs side by side. I think that there's a lot of room still to expose the quail industry, the quail meat industry, again, Many people don't realise that right around Sydney we have these quail uh, or slaughterhouses that slaughter quails as well as other animals. And I also think that we've got space where in this in the hen haven where we'll be able to have the guinea pigs and the quails living together and, and, and rescuing more of them. It is quite fun putting the guinea pigs dinners together because they love, they really love their food. And they're actually some of the most expensive animals that I care for as far as fresh food. They get through so many greens, so much parsley. Um, yeah, the, I'll show you them again munching away. Let's see if we can have a look. There we go. Let's see. Oh, hello. Hi. So I think as well, there's a lot of room for education as far as what do guinea pigs need? What do quails need? Like looking at their natural cousins, there's a very disturbing trend of eating guinea pigs in Peru, which tourists seem to think is hilarious. Um, and I, th I think that here, it's just very common for guinea pigs to be thought of as children's pets and not to be given any kind of real care, not to be given vet care when needed. 
And the same can be for quails. They can be shoved in a hutch and not given the care and attention that they need or the protection from predators. And we want to not only be able to take more of these beauties in, but to be able to give them the safety that they need and to incorporate them into our education programs. So <laughs> aren't they so sweet? So yeah, it's been a real joy to know the guinea pigs that we have over the years. And now the quails. I mean, the quails are relatively new that we've been caring for them for the last year or so. <laughs> Hello, sweeties. I think they'll probably want me to get out of their way now so that they can come down this end because this end we have the better hay, the better, bigger litter tray, which they love to sit in. So they probably would rather that, that I got out of the way so that they could do that. <laughs> but and again, the hen haven is mostly going to be for liberating animals from cages, from battery farms, but there's room to represent these other animals that so guinea pigs that have been so abused in testing. I mean, we even have the phrase to be used as a guinea pig, um, meaning to be experimented on. And honestly, they're, they're so naturally scared that just to put them through that, oh, it would be awful for them. And their care needs are quite specific. You have to make sure that they are getting plenty of vitamin C in their diet because they can't produce that themselves. The hay that they have, like we give them oaten mostly because that's very good for them. They can be prone to bumblefoot like the chickens from pressure sores. And when they do need vet care, it can cost a lot of money. Um, you have to go to a specialist vet and to find out. They're also pretty prone to like bladder stones. So you want to make sure that their greens are not too high in calcium, which is why we avoid giving them too much kale. So yeah but they're gorgeous and we love them and there's so much more we can do i'll just leave you with a little bit more of them because they're certainly more exciting than i am aren't they so beautiful so we definitely don't have room for anyone else at the moment as far as the guinea pig family but it would be amazing to be able to take more in and to educate people about them and children about them and also to give these guys that who do live with us a, a better, more fun life as well. So anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in again and for meeting our beautiful little guinea pig and quail family. And I will see you tomorrow.